Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Anne's Church. Welcome to St. Anne's Parish. Our celebrant this evening is the pastor of St. Anne's, Father Chris Schaffner. We will be using the Gloria from the Heritage Mass, and we invite you to join along. Number 888. And our entrance hymn is From All That Dwell Beneath the Skies. It's found on number 538. Please rise. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. To Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. mercy.
Almighty. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Shout with joy for Jacob. Exalt all at the head of all the nations. Proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world, with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on the level road, so that none shall stumble. For I am the father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weaknesses, and so for this reason must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples in a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage. Get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. specific day, uh, but also from, from one week to the next. And uh, as I was uh, looking at the gospel today, I, I found one of those interesting connections. Uh, there was, if you listen very closely, there was a line that Jesus said uh, today, which is very similar, if not uh, almost exactly what he said last week uh, in the gospel. Now, if you remember uh, last week's gospel, we heard about the sons of thunder, uh, James and John, who come up to Jesus uh, and they ask him, uh, with the intention, they, they say, we want one of us to sit at your right, the other to sit at your left uh, in your kingdom. Uh, and before uh, they, they ask him that, uh, Jesus goes to them and he asks them, what do you wish me to do for you? And that's when they make that request known. Now today, it's, it's a very similar situation. Uh, the blind Bartimaeus is found begging on the side of the road uh, when Jesus comes along uh, and uh, Bartimaeus is, is called forth to him and Jesus looks him in the eyes and says, What do you want me to do for you? And of course, his answer is, as we might expect, I want to see. So so two two very similar situations we have here. Uh, These people have these very deep longings in their heart. They they have this this, this want, this desire. And and, I'm not sure it helps whether one... Jesus does, in fact, respond... Bartimaeus. Uh, we have. Wonder why we go to God. Thing. To us, or maybe it seems he's just telling. to us, and we always have to ask that question, well, what gives? Sorry for the microphone there. That's not good, is it? That's not good at all. Maybe I'll go to the pulpit for the rest of my homily. It's been a while since I've preached from up here, so... Uh, so, so there's a, really a, a very different uh, character uh, to the two types of requests uh, that we heard uh, these weeks. Uh, first, and perhaps most obvious, is that for, for James and John, 
their request was based on a very selfish ambition. They, they come up uh, to Jesus and almost demand that he do what they want. They actually come to him and say, we, we want you to do whatever we ask of you. But, but Bartimaeus today is very humble. He doesn't start his conversation in the same way. Rather, he simply cries out to him from the side of the road, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And even when told by others to, to quiet down, he cries out all the more because his faith in the Son of God is that great. And I think this is the difference between telling God, you know, turn your eyes to me, look at me in my want, and Lord, look at me in my need. I think there's a vast difference there. You know, our Lord loves it when we can come to him in true, humble, genuine need, not demanding something just because we want it, but really opening up our heart, asking for his grace because we know that we need it. And I wonder how many of us uh, have really ever taken a look at ourselves and evaluated how many of our prayers are actually wants versus needs. And how might we go about knowing the difference? I I think, you know, if we uh, were to look at the scriptures, it would seem that our wants often uh, seem to be very specific from the get-go. You know, James and John, they went to Jesus and said, we want to sit at your right and at your left. You know, maybe for us, we come out right away in our prayer and we say, Lord, I want to do well on this test or I, I want this relationship to work out. But, but our needs actually tend to start off somewhat broader as if it's setting a firmer foundation for laying out a little more specific prayer. So like Bartimaeus said today, have pity on me. For us, we might say, Grant me your mercy, Lord. Grant me your healing. Restore my soul. Pour out your wisdom and love. And this is what Bartimaeus did. And we might ask, well, what kind of pity or mercy was he actually asking for? And we might imagine it, it could have been uh, come in any number of forms. Jesus' mercy could have come in the form of restoring his sight, which he did. Or, or maybe in the form of providing for his basic needs so he wouldn't have to sit by the roadside begging. Or perhaps even in the form of just simple comfort or consolation or hope. But it was only in further conversation with Jesus that Bartimaeus' real need was expressed when then he could actually say, no, I want to see. And, and so it is for us. When we go to prayer, we are, need to be praying from a genuine place of need. And so we should start off much as Bartimaeus did. Lord, have mercy on me in my loneliness. Have mercy on me in my need. Because what that does is it, it opens up for us this beautiful conversation and prayer in which we can now further articulate what we see our need to be, whether it is a very specific healing or a peace or a wisdom, what have you. And sometimes, you know, maybe we're not even ready to articulate that need. Maybe we don't really know what it is that we need at the time. But then we just can't keep doing what Bartimaeus said. We keep crying out to Jesus all the more with a sustained and more fervent cry from the heart. You know, when the crowds told him, quiet down, what did Bartimaeus do? He just kept crying out all the more. Come to me, Jesus. Have mercy on me, Jesus. Heal my broken spirit in whatever way you see fit. This is a very good prayer. Crying out to Jesus from the heart is is never in vain. Now, the the other thing that you probably noticed about Bartimaeus, perhaps probably the most obvious, is is simply his state of blindness. You know, he couldn't see. And, you know, I, I think maybe when we were kids, and I certainly did it as a kid, my brothers and I would put on blindfolds, and we tried to kind of make our way through the house. And certainly it was utter chaos as we tripped over furniture and all sorts of other stuff because we didn't know what was right in front of us. And I think so often it is the case when we find ourselves in the same state spiritually. We don't always see what's right in front of us. We don't see the grace and truth of Jesus Christ right in front of us. And so as Bartimaeus was crying out in every direction, so we also find ourselves doing the same thing. We're like, Jesus... Oh, Jesus, Jesus, where are you? And we just kind of keep crying out in this frantic state, hoping that at some point our voice, our cry, is going to land in the right direction. But we need not do that because we can be confident, just as Bartimaeus was, that our prayer is always going to rise to where it needs to go. Jesus always hears us when we cry out to him. And I think it is really a, a very beautiful thing when we can lift up our hearts to God in genuine and confident prayer. And today, I think we see two very important components of this prayer, that we have to be humble enough to come to God in our genuine need and confident enough to know that we're going to be heard.
indivisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only one. and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the cross of fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and according to the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again for the resurrection of the dead, and his kingdom will never end. No end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of the come. For Pope Francis, our bishops, all priests and deacons, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith, may their preaching, service, and celebration of the sacraments guide all to follow Jesus more closely as his faithful disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord for a deep respect for life at all of its stages, from, the conception, from conception to natural death, and for an end to all practices that threaten the dignity and sanctity of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all families, that the home may be a place where the love of Christ is deeply rooted, where children may find an example of how to live out their call to holiness in their daily life. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those who endure the suffering of their body, mind, or spirit, may God grant them merciful healing, and may their faith be strengthened so as to sustain them in their trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord our For our parish and school community of St. Anne's, may we be united in our mission and vision to spread the gospel message of Jesus Christ and make disciples of all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord our for, all, for the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Albert and O'Donna Cubis and Ann Stubbs, May they know the mercy of Christ and rise with him to new and eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty, eternal Father, we turn to you in humble, confident faith that you hear and answer all of our prayers. <laughs> Accept all these needs that we lay at your altar this day and answer them all in accord with your most holy will. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, any little ones present who have an offering to make can come forward and place it in the basket at the foot of the altar. As the gifts are brought forward and prepared, please join us in the hymn, There is a Balm in Gilead, number four, five, six. <laughs> Oh, 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, his assistant Andrew, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Thank you. 
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So once again, after Mass, if you have a moment to stop by our script table uh, over in the chapel area, gift cards are available for purchase. A percentage of all sales comes back from the retailers to St. Anne's Parish or School to benefit our ministries here. So uh, check it out if you have a moment after Mass today. Uh, once again, we continue to host our Synod small group discussions. They're going very well. Uh, parishioner, parishioners are getting together to pray and to discern, to discuss key issues in the church today. Uh, we only have two more sessions scheduled. Uh, the first is tomorrow night, October 24th. 4th. Uh, we'll take the next week off for Halloween. And then our last session will be on Sunday, November 7th, uh, meeting at St. Anne's School. Uh, all are welcome to attend. Uh, these last two sessions, uh, both of them will be focused on how do we help y uh, youth and young adults uh, to truly uh, be part of the church uh, and to bring their gifts forward. So, uh, wonderful, wonderful topic these next two, two times. Uh, once again, check out the display in the back of the church uh, today to find out more about our upcoming gala event to take place this coming Friday, October 29th. It's coming up fast. Uh, you'll find information about the various options for purchasing tickets. I believe you still can purchase seats and tables. Uh, information can also be found at our special Facebook page, St. Anne's Gala. Uh, for our youth, our youth group is, is ho holding a hayride uh, next Saturday, October 30th at 7 p.m. at the home of Carrie and Pat Osborne. A wonderful way to grow together in fellowship and prayer. Uh, more details can be found in the bulletin and on our Parish Faith Formation Facebook page. And then finally today, uh, join us this Wednesday at 6 p.m. for a special rosary uh, along with our Faith Formation students and teachers. We are going to gather at St. Anne's School Gym at 6 p.m. to pray for the continued healing of our administrative assistant, Tess Miller, uh, who is recovering from a recent accident. Uh, so all are welcome to join us for that special prayer that we lift up to God on her behalf. As we conclude then uh, today, let us offer our prayer to the Blessed Virgin as we lift up all of the intentions of our hearts uh, to our Lord, uh, through the Blessed Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. And as we go forth, please join us in our final hymn, Now Think We All Our God, number 195. <laughs> Now 